Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order uh, the New Carlisle City Council regular meeting for Monday, April 4th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Mr. Mayor Lowry? Here. Dewey. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. McLaughlin? Here. Mr. Craybach? Here. All present. Thank you, sir. Now, if you all stand, we're going to have the implication by Councilman John Craybach. Um, we please bow your hands. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord God, in a great nation and in this city. It's a great city, Lord God, that you have prepared for us. You have put people here on this council, Lord God, to be leaders in this city. We ask for your blessing and the blessing in Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we also want to remember Martin Luther King, and today was the day that he was shot. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 We'll do the pledge tonight. We're going to use the flag back here behind us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get moving tonight, I just want to ask everybody that has a cell phone in the audience to turn it down and put it on vibrate if you don't mind, please. And actions on the minutes for regular meeting of 321-16. So moved. Second. Is that Mr. Craybacher who made the motion? No. Well, he beat me. Second. Oh, Mr. McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre. Any uh, comments? Council on the minutes. Mr. Riddle. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craven. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Minutes past seven to zero. All right. Moving on. Communications tonight. None this evening, sir. All right. Move on to the city manager report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, members of the public. Good to see a bunch of students in the audience today. We definitely like that. Um, to start over the action report here, that does say Twin Creeks update. There is There was a resolution that was scheduled for tonight, but we had we, we took it off. Uh, our law director deemed it was not necessary. So disregard that first step. I am happy to report that we are almost done with the Twin Creeks stuff. Um, there will be a resol uh, ordinance on next council meeting to actually sell the parcels. Um, this week I'll be working on a massive Excel sheet to see how much city the city has paid. I'm going back as far as 2007. Um, and that would include all the assessments, all the legal costs that we put into it, and also grass cutting. Um, so it's been a slow process, which I said uh, would take some time when we first uh, were granted the parcels back to us. But um, ORC 5722 is pretty strict. Um, and we need to make sure we follow the guidelines specifically. So again, I'm happy to report that we are almost done with that. Um, along with that ordinance to sell, we'll also be an ordinance accepting the purchase agreement that was in place with um, former city manager Kim Jones and a potential buyer. So uh, again, happy that's almost done. And we'll be updating again at the next council meeting when we have the ordinances in front of us. Great. And moving on, informational items. Just a few updates. We got a lot, we got some complaints about our parks. I'm happy to report that we have purchased a slide. It was approximately $1,400, and that will replace the one at Willowick Park. Um, right now, there is a board placed uh, in the hole for safety so nobody can access it. Um, we wanted to take the slide down completely, but we had found out when you took it off at the bottom of it where the slide attached to the ground were two sharp spikes that, pit, that stuck out, so we decided to leave the slide in place. Uh, we had originally just put tape across it kids came in or somebody came along and had ripped the tape off. So therefore it led us to us actually physically securing a board so kids cannot go down the slide. Um, when that gets delivered, we'll obviously put it back in. Um, I do not have expected delivery date. I don't, not assuming it's gonna take too, too long. Uh, we also got informed that there's lack of baby swings in the city. So we are looking into that also and doing our best options to get some baby swings at uh, our various parks. We also got a complaint of lack of handicap accessible playground equipment. We are again researching our best opportunities for that. And also I'll be looking at possible grant opportunities for ADA compliant um, playground equipment. 
Um, smoking resolution that was introduced at the last council meeting uh, was rejected. I will be reintroducing that um, probably at the next council meeting with the stipulation set forth by council. Um, for those of you not in attendance, I had submitted a resolution to get our parks smoke free to um, promote healthy lifestyles for our children that play at the parks. Um, our council have rejected that. They wanted maybe more of a distance regulation opposed to the whole entire park. So again, I'll reintroduce that resolution with uh, distance rest restrictions around playground equipment, uh, shelter houses, basketball courts. Um, I don't think that we're going to be able to do the bike trail though. So that one's now going to be off the list because it's just it's too hard to do if you don't do the whole thing. Clark County Land Bank, I will be reaching out to Tom Hale, who works for Clark County, to try to get some school for uh, money to demo Madison Street School. Fingers crossed with that. I will give an update once I hear anything back from then. Also, our fire department has got free smoke detectors. So if you do not have a smoke detector in your house or a faulty one, contact our fire department at 845-8401. The smoke detector is free and they will also install it for you. So maybe if you have one that's operational, but you know of an elderly neighbor or a, someone else who doesn't have one, please pass the information along to them as well. And, you, excuse me, yes. I'm sorry. Would you let her when those, there's no age restrictions on that? Absolutely. Because Springfield has an mm -hmm. age restriction. A lot of them do have age restrictions. We do not. So it doesn't matter if you're a senior citizen or not. The goal is safety, and safety goes across all ages. So we took our age restriction off. And they are first come, first serve, so please give them a call if you do need one. The community yard sale, this will be the third year of, of putting that on, huge success. Um, this year I have asked the Western Clark County Business Coalition to help with promoting the event in conjunction with the city. We'll pay for the ad, ad in the newspapers as we had in years past, but by utilizing WCCBC, we get their Facebook feed and all the other promotional materials that they have access to. Um, this year, which we have not done in years past, will include a rain out date. Um, more information will come on that. I do believe that, that's all I have for the city manager's report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Council, Mr. McIntyre. Um, I know we talked about this two weeks ago during the council meeting, but all the trees, or some of the trees, were cut down in the park here. And I just want to say thank you for doing that. The reason that the trees were cut down, if I'm not mistaken, is because they were rotted and hollowed on the inside. But a very large storm come through on Saturday very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather changed in an instant, and somebody could have gotten killed if those branches were knocked off or those trees were knocked off. Um, so I want to thank um, the people in the city who did that for being proactive, getting that done before we had a situation where somebody could have been severely hurt. Uh, so thanks. Mm -hmm. And there are a few more that around town that will be coming down. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay. He just asked, answered my question. Psychic. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Craybalker. Um, talk about community yard sale. Is the date set yet? Date's not set. Usually it coincides with the opening day of the farmer's market. Right. Uh, I'll be meeting with Scott this week, so I'll have some more information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridge, have we sent out any sort of... Uh, letter of interest at all for the uh, Clark County Land Bank for the Madison School Grant? No, I haven't contacted him yet. Okay. No. So, mm -hmm. thank, thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> all right, moving on to comments from the members of the public. If anybody in the audience has any uh, comments or questions, <coughs> Mr. Kilburn, if you would please go to the podium, sir. Former, former councilman, in case anybody needs to know. <laughs> With a different address. But just for the record, uh, Barry Kilburn, I live at 11180 Milton Carlisle Road. That's about 85 feet outside the city limits. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of my, uh, my son and uh, uh, my son's fiance and my two grandkids sitting there on the second row. Uh, uh, they live at 607 West Madison Street. Uh, I'm here about the property at 611 West Madison. I spoke to Mr. Bridge just uh, exactly a month ago today, and I passed some photos out to you. Uh, by way of reference, this house sits almost directly across the street from uh, uh, the new wing of the, the Madison Street School. Uh, the property's been, a, uh, been vacant, to best of my knowledge, about two and a half years. 
Uh, my son's fiance th seems to think it's a little bit longer than that. But uh, a tree, a large tree, fell on that house about two and a half years ago. And I passed some photos out. You've seen the photos. They drug uh, a lot of the stuff from inside the house out into the backyard. Uh, when that tree fell down, it knocked probably 75% of the roof rafters loose, so they mostly collapsed. Uh, there's no roof on the back of the kitchen. Uh, that kitchen's been exposed to the elements for uh, at least the uh, fall and winter of 2014, probably earlier than that. Uh, photos one and three show the, the, the tarp that was stretched across the roof and that's come off and it's blowing stuff all over my, my son's backyard. Uh, his fiance is back here picking up stuff constantly from that, that tarp. Uh, photos one and three show the collapsed porch on the back of the house. Uh, I've seen myself uh, uh, a number of possums and, and uh, skunks and that kind of thing going in and out of there. There were rats last summer uh, in the backyard. Um, the, most of the plumbing and the electrical has been stripped out of the house. Uh, my son broke in the back door last summer because he came home from work and there was water pouring out the back door. He didn't know how long it had been like that. Uh, so he went in and shut the water off under the kitchen sink, but the entire first floor of the house is flooded and the basement was flooded. So now when, particularly when it's damp and I'm concerned about when it uh, starts to get humid, there's a terrible smell around there from that mildew carpet and that kind of thing. Uh, and like I say, I spoke to Mr. Bridge about a month ago and I just wanted to come and get an update on what's going on with that, that property because I, I would be amazed if it's if it's still habitable. <laughs> uh, I think the house probably can have to be condemned and knocked down. But I'm, I'm mostly concerned about the vermin and the animals that I saw out there last sure. summer. Uh, back around Christmas time, I saw a possum sitting up on the back corner of the house with a bird or something in his mouth. And I went over and threw a little piece of insulation or something at him and he went right down into the house. So I know there are animals living in there too. So just wanted to come tonight and get an update. I promise you I would. <laughs> Sure. Mind if I take that? Yes, sir. Um, the day that Ms. me and Mr. Bill Kilborn talked was the very first day the city was informed of the situation that's gone over there. Our code, infer code enforcement officer, James Clark, has tagged that property. We all know who's on council, former council member. There's certain time limits we have to let expire before we go to abate it. This is our number one priority. We just have to let those time limits expire. I don't have that when it's going to expire. I do know he tagged it relatively recent after this. So you're looking at a five-day warning period, a 10-day period for that uh, violation period to run out. With something like this, this is not your typical abatement. Now we have to schedule dumpsters and, co and coordinate a bunch of not only staff workers, but I would love to get some pride workers on this. So basically, we are very aware of the situation. The city's doing everything we can to get it taken care of. Again, we just have to wait for this time limit to expire. We also have to wait for the coordination of the dumpsters and staff to help actually abate the property. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, like I said, I'm just concerned sure. because warm weather is coming up. And you said a month. A lot you of held your word to that month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I, and my son, you know, he's taking care of the yard over there for the last sure. couple of years. He's recovering from shoulder surgery, mm -hmm. so I'll probably be mowing his yard this summer, and I'm not going right. to mow the grass over there. These and days. I haven't physically been to the house. I admit that. I've had our code enforcement have out there. You can have all is this only there. visible from the front? I mean, from the backyard? <laughs> No, it's not visible from the front, but there's an alley that goes up between 607 gotcha. and 611, and there's no there's no fencing around that. So, so it's visible they, from they the actually alley. stopped having people over for outdoor things because mm -hmm. we walk in the backyard. That's sure. what you see. No, I guess <laughs> that's a little. Sir. I think that'd be a little embarrassing for anybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Mr. Um, um, that's not your normal everyday maintenance, right there, as you just no. said. My question to you would be since we know that this could take, if you go through the proper channels with the city ordinances, you could look at three or four months, even longer. Right. My question is, would it be possible to get Clark County Health Department involved in this? Because if it is in fact, and I believe that it is, a health hazard, I think they can do something not different in the city again. I think the city's on the verge of being able to do something. Our total time we have to wait is 15 days. And this is going on a month. So okay. I'm, I'm going to say the time limits are very close expiring. We're going to have to clean it up. First. All steps? Huh? All steps? Mm -hmm. Okay. All we, have to do is give, all we have to do is give one warning and one violation period. After that, they don't comply. We are free to go and abate the property. Okay. Normally, if it's not a bad abatement, i.e. somebody has a few trash bags out there, we'll give them another round of violations. 
okay. just to give them time to fix it. Okay. This one is a little out of control. Okay, and that's mm -hmm. what I was getting at. Um, I didn't know that the roof was off as bad as it is, so we'll probably have to get the county involved anyway to see the house is probably going to be un unhabitable at this point in time. So you can probably almost guarantee Clark County Community Development will be involved in, all along with the health department. It's definitely an average. We need to do our due diligence first as a city before, and clean it up and then let them come assess. Okay. Yep. Mr. Thank you. Mayor. Mr. Bridge, is that house, uh, is it still owned by the property owner or is it in the hands of the It's owned by the bank. We did, I do, yeah, by Jim and his, his bank owner. And that makes it a little, well, I'll be honest with you, we're going to abate it and it's going to be a very long time before we get our money back on it, but that's not the point. The point is public safety, public health. Right. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, will all the cost on this be transferred to the bank? No, Can we make, make the make bank could. pay for this? How or? it does is we'll go ahead and, and bill the property address for the abatement. Um, we'll bill them for the rental of the dumpsters. Everything that goes in, the, every cost the city incurs for the, fixing this will be billed back. Um, if they don't pay it, it gets assessed through their taxes. Um, if somebody buys a house at a sheriff's sale, you might as well kiss that money goodbye. Because any, if we go, say for example, like for a prime example, 228 Gilwood, we cut that grass for four or five years. We've had probably, I couldn't tell you how many, $1,000 amount exactly, but I know when I started as a planning director in 2013, we've been cutting 228 Gilwood for probably a year. That house was sold at a sheriff's sale all past abatements for grass cutting and nuisance abatements gets knocked off and that is a state law we can't control that hmm. you know so if this goes to sheriff's sale we're going to lose the money on it but again it's not about that it's about public health and public safety from the looks of those pictures it looks like it'd have to be demoed anyhow i mean the land would have to be stripped off and yeah, it depends i mean just because that structure i mean it comes a lot to make a house unha un unhabitable it structurally it may be fine it may just meet a new roof on the back and the water is turned off to this real estate, right? I'm almost positive, yes. Okay. I don't know for sure, but if I had to make a guess, an uh, educated guess, I would say yes, okay. especially if it's naked. Right. Thanks, sir. And there is no, uh, there, I might have said before, there is no plumbing or electric. Yeah, somebody stripped it. Mr. Reynolds? Uh, we had spoken about this uh, with the former city manager back in 2013, if you remember, like the ordinance that I would, I, we discussed, it was about like taking these bank, these, uh, real estate groups and banks to court for the money which Cincinnati and the small town of Asheville and mm -hmm. Marietta and all these things are doing would that be something else to look at I mean I had, sent, some copies of, I had sent Mrs. Jen some copies of it but you know mm -hmm. stuff also the cracks so I mean it's a possibility I mean you got to think if these are bank owned it goes to sheriff's sale we're going to lose that money and therefore we're not going to get our legal fees attack uh, back I would like to see my big question those cities who are going after through legal uh, remedy do they have in-house law Meaning, do they have a full-time lawyer on their staff? Yeah. You know, um, if it's I would, feasible. I would pretty educated guess that the village of Asheville probably doesn't. Well, it um, depends. If it's a very affluent area, oh, they very yeah. well might. It's same social economic status as our town. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, but just about 600 people left. Gotcha. And, there, and it's different laws for yeah. cities and, and villages. villages. So yes. a village may not have that. It may not be in the stat in Ohio Rice Code that villages have to take their new maintenance off. They may be able to keep theirs. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot, a lot of research going into it. it it's a cost benefit analysis if you yeah. really break it down. Yeah, I think it's something you should look at. I know, like, we had, I brought it up to you and we had talked about it in 2013 and took it to mm -hmm. our former city manager and she didn't approve the idea. Right. <laughs> Any other questions on this matter? Yeah. All right. And then, one more thing. Yes, sir. I don't want to come to the if it's possible to keep the right name for the next two or three years and that will be the property, I'll take it. And give it to you? Oh, I can't. That's not city owned. <laughs> you want to make that agreement with the bank? More power to you. More power? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Sir, if you would contact the bank and make them that offer, they may do that just to get it off their mm -hmm. books and not have any more further contact. I would wait till after it's cleaned up. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if you want to inherit that right now because there might be some unexpected costs you're going to have to pay if you say, I'll take care of it. I would let them probably do what they best, do as much as they are willing to do before you decide to make that offer. If that, would, if that would happen, what Mr. Lindsay should get, would I then be responsible for the cleanup? Mm -hmm. Yes. As soon as it's in your name, <laughs> yes. it's all on our record. Just let it go for a little bit. <laughs> get flat. I'd wait till about October on my suggestions. <laughs>
All right, thank you, Mr. Kilburn. Any other uh, members of the audience have any comments or questions tonight before we move on? All right, thank you. Mr. Lyra. Uh, Randy, would you keep us informed of what's going on with it? Please? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank sure. you. Thank you. I will send you all email tomorrow after Dr. Jim Clark. I didn't mean tomorrow. I mean, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> He's on it. Committee reports, none tonight. <laughs> Resolutions. None this evening, sir. And we'll move on to ordinances. Ordinance 16-12, public hearing and action tonight, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for website maintenance for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lauer, a motion to adopt ordinance 16-12. Second. Second. <laughs> All right, let me, whatever. Did you get your explanation? I'm going to use that. I heard about three seconds. It was first. First and then take your pick between yeah, you. Yeah, you got a John. I have, I have this version. Yeah. I'm looking for the... The second? Go, Mr. Craig. You can, you can take take photo finish. I'll take this. You can the next one. There you go. And an explanation to this ordinance. This is just a ordinance to allow digital graphics to do our website updating. I fielded some questions with council members about the bridge group involvement. The bridge group posts our website. They don't do the daily maintenance as far as here I need this ordinance or agenda put on the website. I'll be totally honest with you, I am not an IT person. If it's technical, it's not going to work for me. Jason can attest to that. He's in the back. He's probably been in my office three times since then. It gets right and then I mess it up. I am not an IT person. It is very important that our website be current and up to date. That is the eyes that people who are not from here see us. And it hasn't been updated since December because there's something that run. I don't know what's going on with the website, but basically I cannot do it. Um, I know there's a cost involved with this, but it, what would take me two or three hours would take this gentleman probably 20 minutes. Um, so again, the ordinance is front of you simply because I don't know what I'm doing with the website. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Craig Walker. Well, one thing I'm glad is it's a local yeah. person. Scott mm -hmm. is very local. And, you know, he does a very good job. You know, I've seen some of his work. I've been involved in some of his work. And he does a very good job. And um, I'm sure he'll do great with the city. But I also want to thank, there was two citizens. One said that he, he would have tried to put everything on, you know, and I don't, I don't know what we're happy to, but I'm glad he brought that. Then mm -hmm. the, the one guy, and then there was another guy who was looking for a, a place to move, and he said, you know, he said, well, your website does, does, doesn't impress me or something mm -hmm. like that. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad to bring that to your attention. I'm glad you're going on that. And then for 2017, just not get too hard to set yourself, I will be looking at a whole website redesign from top to bottom. This is not a redesign. This is just him to update and maintain what we currently have. But our website, even though for a city of our size and income is not that bad, to be honest with you, um, but we could do better yeah. for not much more money. So he's going to go in and update the, the, me the meeting minutes. He'll uh, be able to put the every announcements, week, put the so agenda on. on there so everybody can access the agenda. Um, when I first started, I was doing it, but again, it would take me hours to do it, and then I would end up messing something up. But he, it's very important for our citizens who don't come to our council meetings to be able to access that. Um, Philip Hermes was the gentleman you were one of the gentlemen right, we were so talking was, about. What he wants us to do probably won't be done until 2017. He wants a database of everything yeah. online so if I can just get it. Well, we're engineer. not going to do that right now. Yeah, he's an engineer. He can, sure. He's bigger than we do. Sure. <laughs> Council Leader, Mr. Lindsay. Didn't Mr. Hermes volunteer to come and set that up for you though? Yeah, but we don't have the capability to do that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He wants it to where you get open a PDF, you just type in something like mm -hmm. Apple or Control F and find whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, he wants the PDF to be searchable. Yeah. So we uh, don't have yeah. that capability because how we do it, how I make the council packets, I print everything out and I put everything together. Then I go to our copy machine and I scan it to my, and that's how you do it. Once you put it from, you can't, it's not a searchable PDF at that point in time. Yeah. He wants to be able to go to the thing and type in the word digital graphics and then it pop up out of nowhere kind of like you're searching a word document yeah we don't have that capability right now we're still we, we will in 17 now. Uh, that's one of the things i'm looking at yeah. mr mcintyre what the capability you're talking about is called ocr which stands for something i don't know what it stands for but it stands for something and that allows you it'll go mm -hmm. through and it'll get the pdfs um sort of echo what mr Kraybacher was saying what i think is really neat about this ordinance 
is that it, so much of it was citizen-led. And some people, sometimes people feel they're sort of disconnected with their government. Government's not listening to them. We had a few people come to us and say, your website's not working. It's not what I want from the city of New Carlisle. You need to fix it. And it was because of what they were saying, their efforts, that we're able to go through and do this. The other interesting part, like Mr. Kraybacher said, is that this is a local company. We're not going for some IT guys in Springfield or, or outsourcing it to some other place. We've got a local guy, shops right here downtown, and uh, he does a great job with, with all the work that he does. Um, so it, it, it's great all around. We're going to have a better website. People know that their government listens to them, and we're helping out the local economy. So this is sure. just a great ordinance all around. Well, thank you. I believe he also said he's going to go in and clean up some of the broken broken links and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. So that there's a one-time seventy dollars fee to do that. After that, there'll be the monthly thirty nine nine. Thirty nine. Thirty nine nine. Which I negotiate. Does that really take you to two thousand and eleven anymore? Right. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Before I vote yes, I just want to ask Mr. McIntyre, are you sure OCR stands for something? Yes. I, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Your word's good by me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you know it stands for something, we're good. <laughs> Mr. McLaughlin. I don't know if he said yes or not. I said yes. He did. <laughs> Twice. Then I just said yes. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Kramer. Yes. Passes seven to zero. Second. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Whenever you're ready, move on to the following ordinance. Give me two seconds, sir. Take your time. <clears throat> Ordinance 16-13E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action tonight, an ordinance to authorize the city manager to in enter into an agreement with Time Warner Cable. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. Move to adopt ordinance 16-13E. Second. Mr. Reynolds. You want to give us a little explanation on this? Mr. Yeah, Mayor? sorry, just taking notes here. No problem. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This cuts kind of came that came to us out of nowhere. I'll be honest with you. I'm just going to give a Reader's Digest version of why this is in front of us. Um, Clark County Sheriff's Office had bought body cameras for all his deputies, including the four that we have here. He did not charge us for the actual body cameras that our deputies will be using. Um, upon um, researching our current internet speeds, they're not fast enough to transport the data from our substation to Clark County Sheriff's Department remotely. Um, it would take days upon days to transfer the amount of gigabytes that this data is going to put in there. So the only option we have is to up our internet speed to the 50 up and 5 down. Um, there is a significant price increase in this. We're going from $79.99 a month up to $249.99. There is a need for it. Um, I do wish the sheriff's office would have done a little bit more research on to how the ripple effect would hit us out here near New Carlisle, but at the end of the day, it's for, for our four deputies to be protected in the event that, God forbid, something happens to them while they're on the road, that body camera is a video proof of what happened. Um, we're going to need these speeds, I think, eventually anyway, um, especially if we look into getting dash cameras put in our cars. Um, so again, it is an increased cost. This will be paid out of the police levy um, because it is for police use. Um, but again, that's the reason why it's in front of us. Now, this ordinance does have a 30 day out. So basically what that means is if council passes this, I sign the agreement, they put the speeds in place and it's still not enough, we can get out of it, we go back to our original terms, no harm, no foul. At that point in time, the data is gonna have to be physically transferred to the county Speaking with the sheriff's office, how that would be done is our, one of our deputies would have to take time off the street to transport the data. I don't like a deputy not being on the street. Physically? Physically on the street. Transporting the data. Physically transporting it to the county. And then downloading it then to, so I don't know how long that deputy would be there waiting for the data to download off what we have to put on their server. With this, this is this, and this, we talked about this, where they are gonna actually be able to 
if when they pass by the substation, it'll start the remote download. Is that what we were talking about? This is, I think, something different. Yeah, I think it needs a dock. It's actually docked. It's a it's a dock. The, the data will be transferred dock. The dash cam data was the remote. Yes. Just drive by and send okay. it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Lindsay, was you? Oh, he was. Okay, was you first? Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. No. Uh, I'm definitely 100% support of this because, I mean, this is, I'm a huge supporter of criminal justice reform. This is like one thing they, they talk about heavily is to make sure that people, that police officers have this equipment because, you know, we see this stuff happening in Cincinnati and Cleveland and Indianapolis or wherever where cops are being targeted and this is a way to identify who might be the targeting. It's definitely something that we definitely need to pass because, you know, this body camera stuff, I mean, I know that you and I have talked about it extensively, you know, and I think it's something we, we need. And, you know, if it's not working, you said you had 30 days, you know, and cancel it. Do you know when we will get the cameras on so we can test it so that 30 days, when we pass this, it goes into effect probably tomorrow or? I, they, they have all that ready. Okay. Um, during that, they're, they're going to load up some miscellaneous video on there, bring it on out immediately to see if it works. So we'll, we'll know okay. rather quickly if okay. there's going to be enough. Yeah, I just want to make sure, like, we don't lose our 30-day window. Right, but they get this whole 30 to second day. Guess what? It's not fast enough. Yeah, yeah. that's, I just want to make sure. So, mm -hmm. All right, well. Now, I will say this, um, I do have a call out the time warner. I have not been able to get in touch with the territory sales manager. Um, no surprise there. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to see if they can just switch it on for a week without us even signing anything. Right. But if, if they won't do that, this is that, this is the agreement to allow me to sign the contract. Is, is there like any other internet providers possibly that would be able that to, that's, <laughs> that's what I was wondering. Yeah. You, you're looking at point. just a few dollars over 2,000 difference. Yeah. Well, I didn't know there was another. I don't know any other internet companies other than Time Warner Cable. That's what I have. Yeah. So. <laughs> There's not how we'd look into that. I think um, no one else could even come close to Time Warner Business Class Speed. All right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lowry, what did you say it was before that, uh, download speed? Uh, Five. Um, what is what is it going to be? It's going to be 50, 50 up and five down. Um, I think it's like three down, and I don't know what. Just it, three? Yeah, it's very basic. We, they don't need a lot. Okay, I thought we had something like thirty. Uh -uh. And that's why I was wondering why it's such a great reason. For no, us. it's okay. Uh, it's 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 just I think it's their lowest tier business class. Okay, speed. it is three down. It's yeah. the lowest down. Okay. Well, they didn't need a lot of speed prior to all this. Okay, I didn't. Know. I yeah. just thought it was thirty. Sure. That's good. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. What does the sheriff office use now for their cameras to download with? Do you know the what speed they use over there? <laughs> what at the sheriff's office? Yeah, I mean when they download their cameras at the at oh, the I sheriff's say. office. They're in Springfield, so they probably got fiber out there laid. To be honest with you, so their speeds Time are Warner fiber for that More or AT and T like fiber or something. Well, Time Warner's faster than AT and T. Ever, ever think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being uh, if this doesn't work, then what are our options besides them driving it over to Springfield every day? That's it. Now the other option is our deputies not to wear the body cameras. Well, that's yeah. you know that's like that's like saying okay we're going to send you out there but you can't have bullets in your gun <laughs> and somebody's going to be shooting at you every day. Sure. I think I think this is also going to be you know kind of like what you'd already said, Randy. This this yeah. step is inevitable. It's inevitable. I mean, yeah. Even in our homes, everybody is getting higher mm -hmm. speeds of internet because yeah. the usage yeah. is just going up, and it's it's just going to transfer through yeah. to our department, and our city offices as well. And we even thought down the road. One of the questions I asked you, uh, you know, when we move into Bell Manor, can we take this with us? Yes. Okay. Would there be any fees to transfer the service? No. Right. You know. So I'm looking. Any. You talk to me. My head's two or three down the road. Two or three years down the road always. And you have to be like that as a city manager. You're not going to. You're not going to flourish as a city. So, um, yeah, I mean, my head's already three years out of this. Great. Mr. Craig, uh, can I ask the deputy something? Um, the protocol for the body cam is not to keep them on all the time while you're on duty, is it? No, um, what our policy says is anytime we're in contact with somebody from the public, they will be turned on. So anytime you're on a traffic stop, or um, that's even a city complaint, if I'm sitting in my cruiser and you know somebody comes up to my window and says, hey, you know, I have a question or I have a complaint about something, then those are to always be turned on. If it's something that we feel is not a police matter, um, maybe say if it's a false alarm somewhere, if it's um, you know an alarm early at Water Dog, yeah. we get there, it's no big deal. We make sure that the person there is aware that we are recording and we ask for their permission. Hey, just so you know, our conversation is being recorded. Do you have an issue with that? 
Now, anything that's a police matter that we feel like is a police matter or a crime or a potential crime or something that happened, they're automatically going to be reported in policy. You know, we don't have to ask for permission at that point. But, like I said, if it's we get there and it's deemed, and eh, this isn't really a police matter, it's kind of morphing it into a conversation, we ask for permission, hey, you're being recorded, would you like me to, you know, turn the recording off? And at that point, it's no longer recorded. Yeah. So some days, it's going to be more information than other days. Exactly, yep. Yeah, I mean, That's someday, true. yeah, if you, we have, you know, seven, eight, nine calls, two, three traffic stops, and then, you know, you'll have a day where you might have a traffic stop in one call. So it's, it's going to be based on the call volume each day. Yeah, okay. That's why I wanted any other questions, Council? Call for a vote. When you're ready, sir. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Craybarker. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Order 16-13E passes 7-0. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. All right, moving on to uh, other business, uh, whenever you're ready there. Mm -hmm. Under other business, there'll be a crime watch meeting Wednesday, April 13th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Clark County Springfield Transportation Committee will hold an open house on Tuesday, April the 12th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. here at the Shelter House. And the topic is long range transportation plan. And that, and that meeting is, Mr. Bridge, that yes. transportation meeting is open to the public yep. also? Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. <coughs> and Mr. Reynolds. A motion that we sing Dewey happy birthday for his 95th birthday. There is a sec. Dewey Brosie's 95th what? birthday. What, whose birthday is it? Dewey's. <laughs> Check it out and see what's going on with that. Are any volunteers needed? Always. 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 And it's not a paid position by any means. So <laughs> no. You're gonna work to, you're gonna work on it. We're finished. You need something signed from one up or a journey. 